Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Howe here, Realtor at Elite Realty. And today I've got a projection into the future, future, future. That's right, November into December. What's gonna happen with the real estate market in Las Vegas? You're gonna have to stay tuned to find out. Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. Of course, I'm Rob Howe, Rockstar Realtor. I'm the Realtor, you are the Rockstar. I work for Elite Realty, and if you need a Realtor, well now you know how. I've got a lot of information for you in this month's Robnostication. This is where I predict what I think is gonna happen next in real estate, and you know, just kinda maybe set some things up ahead that I think are, uh, building blocks for why I think things are going to happen certain ways. And uh, today, I want to talk a little bit about the ever-present word that every is on a lot of people's minds, and that is inflation. Inflation. Inflating. Why are things inflating? People talk about inflation for a number of reasons when they talk about real estate and the housing market you know real estate in general and one of the things that i've heard is uh you know housing prices have gone up due to inflation and that is true but it's not the main reason why we've seen the housing prices soar so right now it's been about six percent year over year from october to october and that would mean if it was just inflation that was moving up our our housing market that we would only have grown six percent right but we know that we've grown nearly 21 percent so there are other factors that clearly have driven up the prices in uh, real estate. But interestingly enough, inflation has another way that it has jumped in and boosted real estate. And that's because investors, and I'm talking big hedge fund investors that have billions of dollars or multi-millions of dollars even, they are looking to use real estate as what's called a hedge against inflation. Okay, so they wanna purchase this property and they're almost willing to buy at tomorrow's prices <laughs> today, you know, today. They're willing to kind of be far more aggressive than you would see investors normally being purchasing these properties because they want their money to be held in that asset. And there's a couple of reasons why. One, because as inflation does tick into the housing market, as long as you don't have any uh, downward trends in the market, your property is going to go along with the way inflation goes. So inflation goes up, housing goes up. And one of the ways that you know this is actually a really important aspect to the investor side of it is from the rental part of it. Rental prices go up with inflation. Yes, everything goes up when things inflate. Inflation basically means it's the rate at which the cur a currency is falling and causing prices to go up. So in other words, your money is becoming less valuable. So things become uh, more expensive. There's obviously more to that, but just to keep it simple here, I have been seeing a ton of investor activity. And you know, one of those investors was Zillow. If you watch my drive thoughts, my last video that I put out, it was about Zillow and why they got out. Well, they were buying, they were investing and they were, ba they were eye buying, but their situation got out of hand. Okay. They really got out of hand. These other, um, investors have been doing this differently and more wisely, I would say, than Zillow. But man, they have been really active still in the marketplace and they're purchasing these properties and then they're renting them out and then they can now have this property that goes up with inflation, um, stays with the, how things go in inflation. Generally speaking, they're hoping that real estate stays strong, which clearly some of these investors feel that's the case. I will say that Zillow's getting out was an indication that they did not trust that. They were so heavily leveraged that they could not afford to be wrong. Okay, so that's kind of what I explained in my last video. It's funny that they're called hedge fund companies because they are buying uh, real estate to hedge against inflation, even though they are not as hedge fund companies, that's not exactly how they do it. They actually, they, they borrow a lot of their money sometimes and they then have these high risk uh, investments that they make. So you got to wonder, is this one of those high uh, risk investments that they're making? Where could be the house of cards that we're sitting on when it comes to this real estate market? 
I have said many, many times that I don't believe that we're on a house of cards when it comes to um, the people who generally are buying real estate for themselves. Like you're not seeing people just get these loans for nothing. Um, they're putting a lot of their own hard earned cash into the market. Um, they're not, they're, they're just not making unwise decisions in that way. And there's a lot of cash involved, but you know, maybe these, these large investors, the way that they get their money allows them to be a little bit more high risk with the money. And all they're seeing is the hedge against the inflation. It's a thought that, that you could have that if there was a problem and you started seeing panic buttons being hit, like you might see in a stock market um that this could create a problem in the real estate market it could be very severe um because you're talking about people who hold large portfolios now the thing is that in general those people don't, they don't they don't want anything to do with problems happening in the real estate market they've got too much there right so they're not going to want to trigger the problem um again Zillow probably made those, even the other iBuyers and that everybody else raised their eyebrow while they were kind of like smiling. Hey, look, our big competition got out of the way. They might have been like, hmm, uh oh, they just they might have been like that. So let's see what happens as time goes. Uh, as long as real estate stays stable, which that's part of my prognostication that I'm going to make today. You know, I don't have anything totally brand new to tell you. I'm, I'm going to say what I have been surprised about uh, has been that once again, now I had to, speaking of uh, once again hedging my bet, I had to hedge my bet when I said what I thought was going to happen in, uh, when we saw the numbers for October um, and into November. We went up one more time in the median single family home price to 410,000. That was a $3,500 increase. Boy, that, tr that train just doesn't want to stop at the station. And what I'm wondering is, will it stop as we go through the, the usual slower times of the year where you would see this kind of uh, thing maybe to, you know, take a breather in our market. Now, there's no doubt that there's been a little bit less activity. There's no doubt that we're getting a little bit more inventory, but it's not hand over fist. And it's not like as if the activity has slowed a lot. And again, anecdotally, my business has been going crazy. Part of that has been from uh, people wanting to sell their homes. So I think there's a lot of people saying, you know, this is the time for me to cash in on the highest point that this market has been. And they're finally with that, that, uh, that way of thinking. Some of the people that I'm dealing with are doing that. And for many different reasons, I mean, I've got friends who are saying, you know, let, we're going to, we are going to leave, you know, in the future, we got this long that we're going to be in Vegas. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to sell our property and then we're going to go ahead and rent. We're going to get into the rental market for a smaller property and, and just be here till till it's our time to go and that way we know we've we've banked the big the big move uh as far as uh you know value is concerned for their property and we can they've calculated what that rent will cost and everything like that this is not a new story for a lot of people they're doing this i've heard not, uh, not just of people that i've known doing it and have been my clients but outside of me there's been a lot of other people doing this so they just look at this you know massive increase and they go this can't be sustainable let me get out now the word apparently for today is going to be hedge because they're hedging their bet and they're saying you know what i'm going to take this money now i'm going to go ahead and rent for a little while and then i know i'm leaving state anyway so i'll i'll leave with a, a boatload of cash on my way out regardless of what happens in the real estate market and then you have investors who are doing that as well the investors are in somewhat of a pickle, uh, although I'd say their pickles are they're pretty good. Uh, some of them are realizing, you know, if I sell off multiple properties all at once, then there's tax burdens. But at the same time, the tax burdens are generally speaking lower right now than what you might see in the future. There have been talks about those tax burdens, you know, when it comes to capital gains tax going up. So many investors are deciding to go ahead and sell a property this year, maybe sell one next year, early next year, um, and bank some of this, you know, 
gain. They're going to go ahead and bank it. And then maybe they'll keep some of their portfolio still going, earning them rental if they've got multiple properties. These are all little pieces to the puzzle of the activity that's happening in the marketplace in my mind. I'm hitting on a lot of different things, kind of just flowing through some thoughts to today with my Rob Nostication. But one thing that I have been keeping a sharp eye on because I, I you just keep hearing the the Fed talking about it, our federal government has talked about raising interest rates as, again, a way to deal with yeah, if you have hyperinflation. If the inflation is going nuts, then the, the way to kind of help that can be raising interest rates. Now, it's a little above my pay grade, so to speak, to completely explain what that all means. But I did have someone that I think is uh, pretty, pretty darn uh, sharp in this area tell me that they don't believe they're going to see we're going to see interest rates go up by the fed because it means that ultimately the money that the fed borrows is actually going up as well so their interest rate gets higher and we obviously have a ton and if you don't know we have a ton of money that uh, our country is in debt for i do think that is what we're going to need to keep an eye on because ultimately if the interest rates go up as we go into next year, that's going to push people out of being able to afford the prices that, that are out there. And this in turn could start changing the, the, the d direction of our market. It's one of the pieces to the puzzle along with more inventory. If we get, if that happens, we get slowdown in buyers, we get more inventory coming on and then maybe the usual sort of t traditional movement of people starts taking place that's been anything but true the way that people are moving around right now and this is where it gets really tough for me to sort of understand where vegas will fit into this because i do think vegas stands to do very well and continue to do very very well because we're still a, a, a well-priced market compared to the higher markets and we have in this city a lot of the things that people like and enjoy in their in other cities. We're looking pretty sharp in that territory. So will we see that we're actually not hurting as much? That'd be kind of nice since, uh, you know, the last time there was a big housing problem in Vegas, we were one of the hardest hit. Arizona and Florida and Nevada were like the, the massive, you know, we got nailed. In the meantime, know that I am predicting strength into next month. I still think, you know, boy, are we going to go one, once again bust through the, uh, the high of the median home price? That's, that's the question here. I got to hedge my bet again, folks. I'm going to say it either stays the same or we go up just a touch because I'm just seeing too much still in the marketplace. All the buyers that were pushed out when you couldn't buy a property if you didn't have money cash over appraisal and all the buyers that didn't have enough to to get involved that waited on the sidelines they're starting to come in now and one of the reasons why they're coming in is because again even for you as mr and mrs or whoever homeowner you are um you are but when you purchase a property and book that mortgage payment in other words here's what your mortgage is and that's going to be for 30 years you are now booking a hedge against inflation there you go if you purchase that property your you know that your mortgage stays the same if prices go up and everything else your mortgage stays the same okay so you've booked against inflation just by purchasing a property there's a lot of people who are seeing what's happening in the rental market and with what looks like no end in sight, even though I know there's going to be somewhere that the, the rental market has to ease, it doesn't look good right now. It only has been getting more challenging uh, in a lot of ways, more expensive, certainly, for uh, renters. You know, you're looking at smaller properties. You're looking at less opportunity to get into a decent pro property without paying, well, what the median is, is about $2,000 or $2,100 for a decent property in Las Vegas. That's gone up a lot. You know, it used to be that like you'd say, uh, and you meant it, we all meant it when we'd say, well, buying is better than renting. Of course, I always have felt that way. And I, you know, you'd compare the numbers and you'd say, even if, even if you're even on what you might pay your mortgage at versus what you'd rent, there's a number of reasons why it's so much better to own your home. But now I can tell you that you can purchase a property in most cases and pay a lot less than you would in your rent. 
you're just it's just and it's yours and you don't have to worry about whatever's going to go on with your landlord and all these things when people look at me and they go rob why should i buy right now should i buy right now and i say well what's your situation i mean if you're looking at if you're staring down the gun of i've got a rent in this market right now and i've got to go you know i want a nice property i want something that might be let's say you know if you want like a four bedroom one story with some yard in a nice area for rent you better come with the cheddar you better come with the cheddar folks why wouldn't you want to own that property instead if it's going to cost you less money you know so that's a big one that's not changing right now so that's why i'm seeing a lot of strength in the continue continued strength in the real estate market we may even blow right through uh into next year and then we're gonna have to start seeing what's gonna happen with the springtime that when we usually will take off once again the market will heat back up so are we actually in a cold phase and then we're this is what we would consider the the cold the you know cooling down of the market and then we'll heat back up you know it's i there's a big part of me that just can't believe that that could that could take place again but there's been a lot of unbelievable things happening hasn't there i will keep you informed and i will just say this thank you for watching my rob nostication i hope you followed along i know i can go from here to there to there to here but i think there's a lot of value information going on up here so i want to get it out and see what you have to say let me know your thoughts i'd love you to put a star in the comments say hello to me let me know your thoughts on inflation tell me where i got it wrong help me get it better for you and remember now you know how if you're looking for a real estate agent you know my number 702-461-7175 you can email me at rob at robhowrockstarrealtor.com or you can tie a note around a rock and throw it through my window I don't care how you get a hold of me. Just get a hold of me when you're ready. And in the meantime, have a great day, folks. See you on the next one.